Dr. John Kitzmiller is here now hosting an expert session on gestational diabetes. Can you discuss that a little bit? Because I know in terms of screening, it's still very much debated. So what is your approach and your advice? Well, the topic is controversy of diagnosis of gestational diabetes. For about 40 years, we've used a system most places in the world that was based on the future risk of type 2 later in life. That's the O'Sullivan's early work done in this city in Boston. Boston City Hospital showed that. And uh, the data were not, were very controversial because they were related, not related to outcomes of the pregnancy. So what we want is to, are we going to have better mothers and babies with our diagnosis and our treatment? Recently there have been two huge uh, studies, clinical trials, proving that treatment works prevents babies from being damaged at birth and being so big and fat and having troubles later. So the question is, can we have diagnostic levels, criteria, glucose tolerance tests that's based on outcome of the babies? And that's what was done in a big global study uh, around the world. It's called HAPO, very famous study. And that gave us the uh, numbers that are related to size at birth and whether the babies make too much insulin too fat and have tr other troubles, and also more preeclampsia, hypertension in the mother. So, international panel called the International Association Diabetes and Pregnancy Study Groups, they uh, deliberated for a year and decided, okay, these are the levels that we can use on the GTT that are related to baby outcome and not to the mother's career later in life, although that's obviously also important. And so that has been the controversy, is can you adopt these new criteria and are they cost effective? Are they, do they increase the prevalence of diabetes so much that the world can't handle it? That's sort of like saying, is there too much obesity, the world can't handle it? The answer is yes, but how are we gonna impact that? That's the question. So the um, many, many groups in different states in this country, many different countries, and the World Health Organization have adopted the new criteria. Uh, in this country, primary resistance is from American College of OBGYN. They say we don't want all these diabetic women in our practices. We're too busy already. Uh, and the NIH held a panel. They invited people who don't have a background in diabetes and pregnancy to give their opinions. And they said we don't have proof because there's no randomized trial of the new diagnostic criteria versus the old. So that's where we stand today. How challenging is that for the ADA approach and trying to help with the outcomes clearly of the babies versus the concern of the overburden on the healthcare system with other authorities? Well, it requires uh, studies to find out, okay, well, what is exactly the increased prevalence? Not predicted theoretically, but what is it really in the real world? And it increases it by maybe 5 to 10 to 20 percent of the GDMs that you already have. And it's by 5 to 8 percent of the total pregnancy population. So it's not that huge an increase that uh, institutions can't deal with it. Uh, the treatment trial showed that most of the women benefit from just nutrition therapy and doing their glucose testing and writing it down and adjusting what they eat based on their glucose results. So it doesn't require medication, it doesn't require a doctor. Uh, it can be handled as it is in our practice in uh, San Jose, California, by adding nurse practitioners or dietitians or LVNs who can assess this and help the women with that. So it doesn't have to be a huge expense of medical care. That's good advice for how to implement these, but with the rise in obesity rates in our country, don't you see this continuing to be an even greater problem? And what can physicians do about okay. that? Well, what can we all do about that? It's not just physicians. Uh, I mean, it's a societal problem. Uh, two good things to do are to treat more women with gestational diabetes, because you can prevent their babies from being big and fat because that is a predictor of obesity in that child and that woman becoming pregnant again in the future, that child becoming pregnant. So you can try to impact this vicious circle of you know, fat mothers, fat babies, then more fat mothers, and it just spreads and spreads. That's one thing. 
You can follow the women for a year after pregnancy, make sure somebody good is following the woman, that they're having weight loss in that first year is critical, and one year of exclusive breastfeeding is critical, because that will reduce the obesity in the children and in the mother. So those are all things that can be done in our healthcare system, which needs to be much more integrated. So the, the doctors and nurses helping the women when they're pregnant and very concerned with them, a good relationship with them. They need to know what's happening in the future to their patients, and that's what we're trying to build now. And clearly that will help people well beyond pregnancy to avoid exactly. diabetes. Exactly, exactly. Doctor, thank you so much. Thank you.